Okay, so um, what I want to, what I'd like to spend a, a little bit of our final time in these tutorials discussing is is this notion of, of subtyping. Um, the reason I'm discussing this is because you see this all throughout any logic number one, and number two is really useful for you to use sometimes. Okay, so one issue is that I've been kind of glossing over this issue. Uh, for instance, you may have noticed that persons are agents. We can call, you know, get connected agent, and we get a, we get back an agent who we are you treating it like a person. Mm -hmm. um, we could say, you know, person get, you know, connect to, and we give it an agent. We can give it a person, and it's fine. And that's because all agents in any logic, all persons in any logic, are agents. And we say that that the person is a subtype of, of agent. In other words, any place we could use an agent, we could substitute a person instead, and it would be safe. We could safely substitute. And here, a person is in some sense compatible with, with an agent. It satisfies all the properties of an agent, but it has some very specific properties additionally that aren't so. Um, okay, so Within um, Java and within any logic by extension, we have subtype hierarchies. So um, we have hierarchies um, uh, which capture commonality. For example, radiologists and orthopedic surgeons are both types of doctors. Licensed practical nurses and registered nurses are nurses. Physiotherapists, doctors, nurses, chiropractors are types of health professionals. And all health professionals and patients are types of people. Okay. Um, so here, all of the subtypes share the general properties of, of these, but can have other more specialized characteristics. So for example, a doctor may have residency location uh, beyond, you know, beyond the location associated with all other healthcare professionals. Okay? Um, so we have a, often a taxonomy of things we're interested in. And any logic also has this taxonomy. So it is this active object notion as agents, persons are agents, persons are also active objects, and, and um, you automatically are operating within that sphere, but you might want to take advantage of it too. You at least have to be, you want to be somewhat aware of it, but, um, but you might want to take advantage of it. So like a person interface might provide methods beyond what an agent interface provides. An agent, so uh, Carmel asked earlier, there are certain things like is connected to or dot connect to um, that are defined for agent, which we didn't have to define for person, but person gets all of them for free. You say it inherits them. But person may have other things that we can ask it, like is it is infected or infect this person or, or you know, get age or get sex. In addition, a health professional, for example, interface might provide recent patients, or a doctor interface might provide a, a routine called residency um, introduction. So we can have hierarchies here within our model. So we might have, you know, in the in the health context, person, health professional, and doctor, etc. Um, obviously, there could be very uh, naturalistically based hierarchies in veterinary science. Ungulates and perissodactyls and ardeodactyls, all those sort of uh, things that I knew about when I was young. Um, so uh, there's some advantages for capturing these hierarchies. Uh, one thing is is what's called polymorphism, and that's what we've been dealing with thus far. We can treat a health professional as a person. We can treat a person as an agent. We pass it around like an agent, and in every way it treats it as an agent. All the things that operate on agents. Like the ability to connect to another agent, the ability to ask, you know, uh, are you, are you, uh, who's the nearest agent, or, or uh, are you connected to this other person? Um, anything we can do with an agent, we can do with a person. That's really valuable. We don't have to go define all those things. Every time you define a person, or you define a dog, or you define a deer, you don't have to go define, define all these things that any logic provides. That's a really big benefit. But there are other benefits too. Um, 
the benefits uh, in terms of sort of understanding, uh, re reuse, what we talked, uh, talked about, that sort of code can be reused in extensibility. So you might build in, over time, more and more types of, of, uh, of agents, deer and elk and moose or what have you. Um, now you folks are automatically using this, as I said. That's why you have these agents, and then you have a person, and a person can be treated like an agent. It's a, it is an agent, it's just a more specialized type of agent. But you might want to take advantage of it by defining, for example, certain characteristics in your model for, let's suppose you had a model, a multi-species model, which embraced you know, deer, elk, and moose. You might have certain characteristics that are supported for all of them, for you know, uh, all these servants. And the servant characteristics, maybe even servant behavior rules, like about how they behave, they have a rut season, and so on. All those would be automatically used with and provided with automatically there when you define an elk. And maybe an elk would just differ in terms of some of its details. Um, for example, bigger horns or bigger antlers or whatever, whatever distinguishes um, that. So bigger body size and, and sort of additional behaviors beyond that. Um, so uh, it's the notion of polymorphism, you'll sometimes hear it. The, the fact that we can pass in a person where an agent was expected and connect to, that's polymorph an example of polymorphism. Okay. So I said any logic models are built around a set of classes with subtype relationships, so agent, person, active object. A person is an agent, is an active object. And by virtue of that, it has certain sort of abilities. Okay? So this is one hierarchy. So here we have agent, and we might have person, and then we might have men and women, for example, within person. Um, these blue ones are supported automatically by any logic, but we might have you know, other subtypes, so for deer, bucks, and does. We might have cervids, and then deer, moose, elk, et cetera. Right? Um, birds might be an agent. And then maybe you have lorikeets and, and um, you know uh, chickadees and uh, and, uh, uh, and raptors of various sorts. Um, so it turns out all of any logic is built around this sort of stuff. So you have transitions, you have transition based on rates, transition based on conditions, transition based on timeouts. This is all behind the scenes. You have experiments. You have experiments of simulation, parameter variation, experiment compare runs, optimization. Etc. This is all going on behind the scenes, and Java provides us in spades. So, for example, you have queues, and queues are collections, and lists are collections, and sets are collections. And collections are all iterable. In other words, you can kind of ask a for loop to go through them one after the other, and you can have of sets, you can have sorted sets, etc. These are all sort of provided as part of of, of Java, and um, one of the most um, powerful way, things that we can do in any logic is is creating um, subtypes. So I'm not going to go into this because with any logic 7 coming up pretty soon, some of these needs with like resource units and entities are decreasing. But suffice it that right now we can create a version of entity that keeps extra information. It's a specialized version of entity that we may have circulated that keeps reference to an agent. So that's how we sort of get agents to go into a discrete event model right now. We give it a special type of entity that carries around an agent. Okay, um, so, um, okay. so uh, subclassing is a very powerful way of, of achieving this, okay? And I, I don't have time to go into it, but I provided a model with multiple agent classes in the same model. So these might be deer, elk, and and moose or something like that within the same model and and they're all mixing together within the same uh, network okay um, so here we do what we call create an agent superclass maybe a servid and then we have multiple subclasses um, so we say they extend servid by having additional properties so so maybe we have a moose we have an elk and we have a deer for example um, and um, and then uh, and then we could have code which adds sort of some deer, some moose, uh, some moose, and some elk into there. Okay. Um, 
I had some examples of this, but um, the main one I want to show, this is actually a mistake, this should say HPV, um, HPV um, model. Um, I, I can't, can't remember exactly what it's called, but this is what I want to show you. Um, so, um, here we go. Um, Okay, so that's the, that's the, okay, so let's go open, here we go, and we want to go to look at the HPV model, so classes, okay, and then we want to do example models, and we want to do um, H4 sharing in class only, HPV, here we go, okay. Uh oh, which of those is more recent? Uh oh. Um, okay, HPV model, AnyLogic 7. No, okay, this, this, there we are. 